for the union. Hello, y'all. Uh. I was selling crack on a private jet up in the hell and back. But no confusion, this a reunion. Hello, y'all. Welcome back. Get murder here. He counting money. He said, can me in the hell with rap. I'm only here to shit on niggas and piss on bitches. Welcome, man. I bought jewelry and bikes, nigga. Black Benzes and white figures. Now I'm out here and I'm looking for more chandeliers and light fixtures. Nah. I don't like niggas, what's wrong with me? I'm a right, nigga, but this 44 turn to Michael Jordan. I'm looking, say, take flight, nigga. Welcome back to It Is What It Is. This episode is sponsored by Underdog. The app is an easy way to make some cash just by making picks on your favorite players. I got it. Underdog is available in more than 30 states, including California, Texas, and New York, just to name a few. Underdog is offering promos every day, all October long, so make sure to use code Mace, Kim, or STAT to get up to $1,000 in bonus cash with your first deposit and get a Kirk Cousins free pick. Kirk just needs one yard for you to get your money up so you can support this show by hitting the link in the bio and downloading the Underdog app today. I'm Treasure Wilson, a.k.a. Stat Baby, along with your hosts, Mace and Cam. Killer, what's good, man? What's up, man? How you, man? I'm doing phenomenal, man. Stat trying to dress like me. Stat trying to wear black. Black and black. Oh, man. And we got a special guest here today. Yeah, Stat, where's his yeah, intro? Today, Stat. we got special guest boxer Tiafimo Lopez live in studio. Welcome to the show. Hey, what's up? What's up? <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, I ain't even know Tiafimo there. What's up, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> what's up? What's up? What's up? I was Paris treating you. Shit is cool, man. It's all right. Murder, 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 murder. We don't like with murder. I was in Paris yesterday, murder. I'm Monte Carlo today. <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference for those that don't know? Google it, man. I'm not here to teach. I'm here to preach. <laughs> Google it, baby. <laughs> if they not worldwide niggas by now, then listen, man, you're on the wrong show, man. Yeah. Two different cities. There you go. So so let's start. Um, you got anything you want to ask Steel Fimo to start off? You normally have the I, I ain't know you was on the show. Tio, what up? Yo, what's up? <laughs> How you doing? How you living? Yo, why you hey, yo, shit, why you cop that plea, nigga? Why you wanna fight why you wanna fight your court, nigga? What the fuck you talking about? What's the problem? Shakur, man, I think Shakur right now he he got his own problems that he got to deal. He got his own problems. When I seen you like, I seen you somewhere and you was like, I would never fight Shakur. I ain't really my thing, and I got mad respect for Jay Prince. What do Jay Prince got to do with you fighting Shakur, bro? What's up? I'm happy you here. Let's talk, nigga. I love it. What's the I love deal? It. That's that's how I be. I love yeah, it. New York, all of man. I love it. Yeah. Nah, I say like to be real. Just I ain't trying to give the man his first loss. I let somebody else take take that handle that. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's what it's oh, about. You ain't want to yeah. give him his first loss? It? Nah, yeah, I ain't trying to. I ain't trying to deal with that. I've seen Shakur lose in the amateurs back because we all from that class. Yeah, and uh, it ain't a good look, man. There was this one time, especially here in Vegas, National Golden Gloves, like twenty fifteen, uh, same year me and uh, Jerron Ennis Boots won. And Shakur, man, he lost it. He lost it, man. Uh, he lost to Ruben Villa, and then he wanted to go up to one of the, I think he did, wanted to the top to the rooftop of the hotel, and he wanted to jump off. Yeah. Oh, wow. shit. I ain't, have, I ain't trying to have actual blood on my hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the way you I didn't know he was going to say that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, the, the, the Olympic shit, him tearing up and stuff, that ain't nothing. Like it's been bad. Yeah. He was on the roof for real or you playing around? Nah, he was. Yeah. Nah, that mental health is a serious thing. So, yeah. I'm not going to laugh about that. For sure. It, it can be. So. You make me ask about boxing, man. That's what I'm going to do. That's right. We ain't going to say it. We're not going to sit here and bash the core because that's not where, where we even yeah. started with the core. A lot of people think that we is bashing him. Look, he's I mean, a if we really want to bash him, I don't know. 
No, I saw this one. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> you Wait, gotta do it again. You gotta do it again. again. <laughs> you said you seen what? Let me pause my hand, man. Look, on a serious note. The thing about it when it comes to him, and I'm not going to stay on Shakur long. I just thought since we started with that. And I'm glad you're here. You know, I'm a big fan of yours. I See, the reason why I've even started with that is because, let me tell you something. I don't know if you've seen it or not. But basically, I was like, yeah, fight Tia Fimo, nigga. That nigga, he launching bombs. That nigga hit hard. So then when you put up that you would never fight Shakur, he posted it and tagged me in it. And he's like, this the nigga you talking about want to fight me? And you was like, kind of timid. I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't want to use the word timid, but you was laid back. And he was like, nah, he was, I wouldn't fight him. So he tagged you. I don't know if you've seen it, but he tagged me. And he's like, Cam, this the nigga you pumping that want to fight me? So I felt disrespect. I'm like, I'm, I'm me sitting here pumping up T.O. And he threw me under the bus. That's how I felt about it. Nah, it's a, uh, you know, everybody has something quick to say, that? though. They, they got a lot to say, and they can use that always on replay, relay, whatever. But it's like... No, but did you, did you see what I'm talking about? No, yeah, for Actually. sure. I know, it was on um, the Danza pro, uh, project. Yeah, so... Okay, got it. I remember, yeah, yeah. I was, um, I was expressive on that one. Yeah, and I say what I say okay. off my chest. Can't nobody really like, you know? So when it comes to it, if it ever comes around, he's still 35, but nah, you know what? This is what it is. I just didn't want to. Now that I tell you the backstory behind it, who do you think oh, is okay. your hardest? Who do you think is your hardest fight at um one one forty? Who is your top? See, like like you was mentioning earlier, right about like mental health, all that extra stuff. I mean, I blame Ryan Garcia for that because that's that's when boxing really started like pushing it. But um, nah, it's just myself. Nobody could beat me. Nobody. It's been shown. It's been proven. At one forty, I'm the only one still remaining. Retaining my title, my titles, and at the same time, still the king of the division, linear world champion at 140. So everybody else been, they've been just, you know, what's next? What's next? What's next? People dropping belts. I'm still here. That's why I was thinking, you know, I need a, I need a competitor. So I was thinking of Devontae Tank Davis or Terrence Bud Crawford. Terrence, come on now, come yeah. on. Cause it's killer, like that. Killer, it, it's, killer, it's, killer, it's reactions killer. Reactions like that that get me going. Killer, did you hear him? He said turns by Crawford. Yes, sir. I'm not mad at that. I, I think I'm not. I'm not going to throw you up there, welterweight. You might be a little too light, pause. But uh, I, I don't know. I, I'm not going. I like. I'm a fan of this nigga. I'm a fan. I'm a you know. Terrence is a monster, but I don't know. Do you think you're? You can make that weight. Not saying you wouldn't make the weight. You're at 140 now, but I'm talking about you could bulk, bulk up to fight a Bud Crawford because his last fight was at 154. No, yeah, for sure. I mean, anything's possible, truthfully. I mean, if you think about it from that point of view, why is Crawford and everybody okay with Crawford fighting Canelo, which he got to go two more weight classes up. So from 147, 54, that's a weight class plus the extra. Yeah, two. you're right. You're right. You're right. I stand corrected. I'm going to think. I think, I'll be honest with you, not to cut you off, Mace, is that I was pumping the Crawford Canelo thing, but I'm not sure no more after seeing Canelo's last fight and Crawford's last fight. Now, don't get me wrong, Crawford for the unorthodox nigga. That nigga was mad herky jerky, paused, moving around. He was hard to hit, and he was pretty tough. Um, but he didn't, it, it's been fights previous to that with Bud to where he was able to push a button. And he say, oh, the fight is close and go and knock you out. Um, I didn't see that in his last fight. So to jump two weight classes to fight Canelo, I'm not sure about that. What's your opinion on that particular fight, if that was to happen? For myself, um, truthfully, you'll see the, the size measurement on that because you got to go up three more. You got to pretty much go up two more weight classes. It's no longer just uh, that one. And his first weight class that he jumps up, Crawford, you know, he having a hard time with Madrimov. And and look, the guy only had 10 pro fights coming into a guy that already got, what, 30, 40 professional fights undefeated, Terrence Crawford, and gave him a hard time, you know, and, and showed a lot of flaws in him. And I think that one year staying out the, out the competitive ring, I think that really did a lot of damage to him, too. So I'd rather get him now before he hits that peak. But um, for the Canelo situation, I know that it's just a money, that's a money grab. That's a money show right there. You don't think he'll beat Canelo? Uh, 
Not saying I, I just don't think it will be um, outclassing like he did with Errol Spence. Oh, okay. Like, he's going to really have to really put everything else, last bits of his prime or whatever he has left in him for that fight because those weight classes are different. I mean, look what happened to Canelo against Bevel. I mean, just one cl- one weight class up. People try, yeah, people try to sweep that under the rug that Canelo got beat by that heavyweight because they love Canelo so much. But, yeah, Canelo took an L when he tried to move up. Exactly. My point. So, you know, you already, you know, Crawford got a legacy. He got all that already stamped. You know what I'm saying? I get it. But now he just want to cash out. And and people act like I, I want to do the same. But in reality, it's just I like I like being that underdog. I really do. I like everybody. Why? Why is it that you and um Devin Haney never fought? To be real, that's more on their side. I've tried three times already with uh with Haney. I tried already with Haney three times. Um, and the last time they were supposed to have a meeting with my promoter Bob Arum from Top Rank, and they never came, never showed up. But the moment that my my actual first defeat that they gave me, they jobbed me. But that first defeat that they gave me, who was quick to jump right away. Right away to Cambosis. That was Devin Haney. So I mean, there's a lot of things that y'all just don't know with the tweaks behind the behind the scenes. But this shit really, uh, it, it's a shit show. <laughs> Why you never fought Cambosis again? I try to fight Cambosis again. I even asked for the rematch and stuff. And then apparently one of his team members they said they're not gonna fight me. Yeah. All right, Kello. My bad. No, no, that was a great question because I want to stick on that. Is that what prompted you to move up in weight? Because after you lost, you moved up in weight. Were you, was it hard for you to make that weight? And it's, that's the reason you moved up? To be to be real, I've been at that weight since, like, my amateur days, 132 pounds, really. So going up three more pounds on that and then since probably, like, what, 14, 15, holding that all the way to 24, I mean, um, that did a lot of damage for me. And then the fact that the boxing game, they know what they're doing. They got the experience. They kept postponing my fight, you know, after my big win against Vasily Lomachenko. I wasn't even supposed to win that. You know, Vegas had me as an underdog, 4-1. to one. So all those things, you know, it's just um, I, I learned the game. I learned the game by, by my lessons. That's, that's really it. So I just decided to say, hey, I got to listen to my body. I can't, I can't, like, exert it that way no more. I had two tears fighting, buddy. Two tears in my, <laughs> my esophagus and in my chest. So I know we mentioned a lot of these fighters, but I want to just say three different fighters and you tell me the outcome. Yeah. All right. Tank David. Um, I would say that doesn't go past that won't that I don't even think it'll enter the championship rounds. Yeah. What happens? Oh, someone getting knocked out. Made the best man win. Hmm. Yeah. I think that was interesting. Why you say someone instead of he, he getting knocked out? Because I got to give him a little fair chance. So you, know you think you think you dominate Tank? I think I dominate any of them. If you really look at it, if you, you got to really tap, tap in on this, look at the resume, all that extra, whatever, whatever. There's a certain limit that you hit, right? But then there's that, that next criteria, that next top tier. And if you don't match that, you know, you, you never going to know how great you really are. And I've done that a few amount of times already. I jumped out that box and done that. So I have yet to see Javante come out of that box yet. You know what I'm saying? They're about to put him with a guy at 130 pounds. Whether he's a champion or not, you're getting a guy lighter than you to come up and wait to make you look good again. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't get me wrong. Guy, the kid got skills. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Got skills. He got it all. But, like, to what level? You haven't hit the A class yet. I'm A class. You haven't hit that yet. So you, Devin Haney, Shakur, Devin, 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 and Shakur should even be like mentioned, really. Why not? Because they, they, they not good. One puts you to sleep while the other one can't take a hit. Hmm. I like the way he's talking, Cam. I, I really do. I, I'm, I'm for it. You know. He's supporting he, he it. He talked a lot. Yeah, yeah, listen, that's why I was I'm disappointed when he didn't have my back. I was a little upset about it. Yo, my bad, like Cam. Hey, my... hey, yo, my B, yeah, like, for real. <laughs> for real, for real, my B. <laughs> like, I ain't going to let these guys try to suck at anybody, but, like, it, it is what it is in that, in that sense, in that context. They're going to try to grab everything, but I haven't had a contract sent to me at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had not one of them press me at all. 
because yeah, we had that we had um Bill Haney on the show and he basically I think he would basically say that you you just talk and you don't really want to fight. I just talk, but like every every person had the opportunity to fight Vasily Lomachenko back in twenty what, 2019, 2018, 2017, came twenty twenty, we fought him. Yeah. Right away. And I caught me and my father, dynamic duo really, who's my trainer too. We called that out. We made it happen. I fought, like, if y'all really think about it, I went through every step to get to a world title, fought the world champion, which was Richard Comey at a lightweight division, yeah. beat the world champion. Then I went and fought for Silly Lomachenko for Undisputed here in Las Vegas. Then we got Josh Taylor. Like, nobody really going after these top number one dudes. But I don't blame y'all, like, at all, because it's just the algorithm. It's just the way this whole propaganda is. Like, they just, I'm so great that they got to hide me. So are you are you willing to take um cuz you say you could be you could be tank right so are you willing to take less to the fight him to prove that or or I've you been, wouldn't do that No nah, yo bro <laughs> I've been doing that in my last fights yo yeah. I I have yet to even make more than a million dollars in every fight Wow yeah like every fight when I fought Lomachenko in that time and COVID Everybody was talking about how he gave me 800 grand on top of whatever. No, never did. I came back home with like $460,000 after everything. Fighting the number one pound for pound over Crawford and Canelo. And then when it came to Josh Taylor, I came home with probably like seven, seven, eight grand, seven, eight hundred grand. So is it true that um, promoters can um, make a fight for a certain amount of money, give you half of it up front, and then in the back end have you waiting for it? Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to jump on that one because that's like behind the scenes, how we, how we fluctuate the money. So I'm not going to say yes. And I'm, I'm not going to say no. Everybody's different. However, yeah. no, I'm however, saying does that happen in the business? We are just trying to clarify that. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely does. Yeah. Definitely happens. It, it's uh, but I wouldn't say half. It's uh, probably like a quarter, you know, a quarter up front because these fighters could get injured. Like quote unquote, Shakur Stevenson. So they're not going to just put up everything. You know, injuries do happen in the training camps. Wow, Killer, we in the wrong business. Killer, we got to expand our <laughs> business. All you need is a quarter of it, Killer. Nah, I ain't out to jerk niggas pause. That's the whole thing. <laughs> you would have been made for millions fucking with us. That's the, that's the problem. These niggas be trying to get over on niggas, man. That's the problem, man. Really? Let me ask you something. You, you brought up the Loma Checo fight a few times. That, that fight looked relatively easy. Uh, to me, for you, yep. was he scared to get hit? It looked like he didn't want to get hit. Going into that fight, like you say, you were the underdog, but you look like you should have been the favorite. You look really aggressive. You look way bigger, Paul. You look way stronger. Uh, was that an easy opponent for you, or you were just that hyped to fight him that it made it look easy? I um, I think yeah, I guess it's just the hype behind him. But no one's ever faced a fighter like me. I think that's really it. My father he threw me in with pros by the age of thirteen. Like he threw me in there with the sharks. Like you know, and and I always held my ground. So I just I believe in me. You know what I mean? Like the best times that you really gotta tap in on your belief is when everyone's against it. So that was my always biggest motivation. I, I knew that this guy never fought nobody like me. No one got the footwork like me. Every time that Loma did that little side step, I was right there, leveled back with him. That takes years of skills, yo. You either got it or you don't, you know. And um, that that whole sh situation, I did 10, 13 weeks of camp with him for that fight. So that's another thing. When I'm fighting top-tier fighters that I know that have the abilities to make it a dif difficult one, I'm tapping in at 8, 13 weeks. That was good. Well, he, he he said he be dancing and shit. That was that nigga. He, he said he be taking dance classes, so his footwork supposed to be crazy. Yeah. He wasn't looking like that dance nigga that he be pumping that he is. That's what you saying? <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah, I can say that. I know Devin Devin Haney can't, but I know I can. So, you know, I, <laughs> I love it. But see, I talk my talk, but I actually walk the walk. Yeah, yeah I, I want to ask you about that because you know. Haney is, is cool with the show, and um, I have to ask this because you keep bringing that up. What do you think about the lawsuit and, and with, with um, Haney? Um, oh, and Garcia? Yeah, choosing to, um, yo, like, to sue him. <laughs> that's madness, yo. I, I, don't, I don't know. You might as well get out the sport. 
You know what I'm saying? It's like when the going get tough, how you go and sue? You know, you can't, you know, that that's not how it work out here. I mean, that's why boxing is the number one toughest sport in the world. Even even though he took um illegal substance? Yo, you know how many of these fighters out there that are actually doing stuff and they wash that? You know how many got, like, connections with the anti-doping? That's why I want to bring in USADA. You know what I'm saying? I'm What's trying to that? bring in. What's that for? USADA, that United know. States Anti-Doping Agency. Yeah. Which don't play no game. They used to do with uh, UFC, but Conor McGregor, he ain't want USADA to come back. And I like Conor McGregor. Whatever his decision was, that's on him. But he is the UFC. So the man didn't want USADA back, and they booted USADA out of the UFC organization. So you don't think he has the right to um, sue since the guy took um, something away from his brand? You know how you go and sue a guy? Go and fight him again and show the world why you the best. Like, this ain't about doing all that. Like, we, of course, we got to take a lot of legal action. But, like, how, how are we going to be okay with even Bill Haney saying, you know, the father saying that his son is going to go out there and kill Ryan Garcia? Like. I go off of what I'm seeing. That's just that's just mockery, man. Mockery to the sport. We don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Yo, there's been people that's actually been dead from people cheating, putting um, you know, plaster in they in they gauze and tape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they never sued them. You know, and that was back then. I don't know what's going on now. This modern day era of boxing is like. That's why I'm. That like, was been, actually a a great point. Um, that's why I've been. I like, remember that when the person did that. I'm gonna be real with y'all, man. That's why I'm like doing other rounds right now. New York Stock Exchange, um, LA base. I'm just dropping everywhere. Florida. I'm I'm planning on building boxing gyms, some facilities. I got to get out of this bit because nobody want to fight. Nobody want to be tough. Everybody just want to act tough on 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 social. Yeah, because last year was sometime last year that you said you were retiring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why was that? Why was that? Because I already knew. Like, I already had, um, I got, I know my mother, man. My mother, she, she, <laughs> she definitely, you know, she wants me to be more articulate the way I, I, I express these things. You know what I'm saying? I'm 27. I'm young, but I ain't stupid. I just, I, you, you, when you see a script, you're reading it, you already know how it's going to end up. <laughs> I know I could end up going and keep moving forward. You know, if you're already in it, go, the only way out is through, right? But there's other areas. There's other ways to climb up that mountain. You know what I'm saying? And and um, I definitely wanted to retire. But that was just to take a script out of uh, Floyd Mayweather. He did it after he beat Ricky Hatton. He left out for like two years, and then boom, he made his um, his equity, he made his worth back again. And then that was Manny, Money Mayweather. Mm. So... It's little things, and, and actually, when Shakur was fighting Edwin De Los Santos, I think last year for the uh, Formula One race, or two years ago, um, Floyd was like, yeah, you already know what you're doing. And he was just joking and laughing with me. We were just chatting for like 20 minutes, tops. Like, there's a certain way to build this. Like, it's so simple, though. It's not as hard once you got it, you know, because you're the face. You can really monetize whatever you want. That's why, like, my... my, my um, my comment that a lot of people felt that was racist, whether it was monkeys, banana shit, it, it, it's just to spice it up. Because boxing, one thing is you got to be tough emotionally, mentally, physically, every avenue. Mm -hmm. So you can't, you can't take it as an insult, but other than a guy is pressing a fight and wanting a reaction from the other guy. Okay, so question. Since you are only 27 and you've mentioned like retiring and like just all those different factors, what do you feel like your end goal is? I really want to make boxing great again in my own essence. Like, I actually went, like, these guys didn't take it lightly. I wasn't supposed to beat Lomachenko. Like, mm -hmm. none of that was supposed to happen. A lot of people lost a lot of money and deals for that. So I became the black sheep of the boxing world. You don't hear me a lot. They talk about 140 division in my division, but they don't mention who's still the king. You know, done it in two weight classes. I go for a three. That's why I want Crawford. Crawford is the third one. He has the ring, ring lineal. That'll be my triple crown. That's like a hat trick in soccer. You out of the, you, it's like, numbers up. Like, pfft, I'm you, out. You think you stop Crawford? I believe so. I'm very, I've been getting better. Like, that's the thing. I, what, what, what's the age gap that you start hitting your prime? Around 26. 26 to win in boxing, if you think about it. 30, 31. All right, so I'm in between that gap right now. Just turned 27 two months ago. It's coming around. And that's why not a lot of them just want to see it. They don't want to be in it, but they want to see it to see where they could put their other 
other puppets or pawns or knights, whatever you want to call it, chess pieces into play with me. So what I want to do, and you were saying, I just want to help the game because these other fighters that are coming up right now, all these young boxers from USA Boxing and from all the other organizations, am amateur, like nobody really helping them out. Every time I speak my truth, I get, I get a whip every time. I get slashed, but it, it's okay. It just ain't for me. When, I, when my time is up, I want the next kids to have a clear road. You know what I'm saying? I think that's, that's a true honor. You know, it's leaving legacy. And I'm great at it. So if you feel like nobody is helping them out, who do you feel like is helping you out? Uh, you know, they always say we can't talk about religion, but it's truly that right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I'm that. You know, I never never took one in, the, in that anal. Nah, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I do it the hard way. Like, just, you know, like like Achilles said, pause. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he lost me just now. I said, like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, I mean, listen, it's um, uh, only one thing I can say, just one thing, it says, that 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 uh that he said the son of God he said one thing he said um follow you know follow me you shall never die and that's it you know what I'm saying so I, I I done seen a lot of dark stuff but through him I've been able to come out of them you know so that's all it is. Would you fight Ryan? I know Ryan mentioned me. You know what I'm saying? Ryan Garcia did mention me. However, next thing you know, he goes a couple of days later, rewriting his stuff, and he says um. You know, since I've been out for a whole year, I'm going to take a tune-up. I know I ain't no tune-up, so he's going to go out there and probably fight somebody that maybe we know, but not at that level. But would you fight Ryan? That's the I fight everybody. Everybody. I know Ryan said a catchweight. I don't do catchweights. I don't do catchweights. Like, we go to 147, fight for a belt, world title. I do titles. I do world titles. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And and one thing, though, about me is that I'm, I'm, I got to get in context, but USADA, United States Anti-Doping Agency gonna call them even if i gotta pay out of pocket but like my takeover promotions that i'm building up we gotta bring this into boxing because everybody else staying quiet and making a lot of money behind doors and some dirty money too so if you were fighting if you was fighting if you were Devin haney that night and he comes in three pounds over are you still fighting yeah you're still fighting but you gotta yeah. it, it, that's a choice that you make you know what i'm saying all right i'll fight you but we gotta do you know we got to see what, what will happen over there. You know, if anything, I go in three pounds and then, you know, you got to have guys that are already watching that. You know what I'm saying? You, yo, I be knowing if my guy made weight before we even get on the scale. You know what I'm saying? How was that? It's just boxing. It's a grimy sport. And you, sometimes you just got to play dirty. You know what I'm saying? Well, you don't think Tank gets people to spy? I mean, we all, we all end up doing something. Hmm. And and we all learned that from from the guy that was TBE. Floyd did that. You can't. How you you got proof? <laughs> yeah, man. Look, there's a lot of things. This is Floyd's. Uh, this is Floyd's town, though. This is city. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> no, but but um, he money Mayweather for a reason. Sound like the Yo, what you man. meant when you told you could get? What you meant when you said you could kill somebody and get away with it? When I say that. Oh, I thought that's what I'm, I'm asking my man who love you. I thought he said you said that and you said that uh, some monkey shit he's telling me right now. I told him you on the show. Oh, you yeah, call yeah. Black monkeys too? Yeah. Nah, nah. See, that's why everybody be pulling that out of context. Like, that's what I'm asking. I, listen, I hey. know you was on the show. I'm trying to get everything that these you. my friends love about you. Nah, I love Actually, that. I love that. Man. Nah, for sure. Look, so there's three words that we can't say in any industry, right? And I think we all know that. However, what I just did right what there. What are those three words? I, <laughs> I ain't saying it. I ain't saying it because um, one thing about me, there is always a line. There's always a line. You know what I'm saying? I learned that from Tupac and all the other greats out there. So I, I ain't going to press that. Um, but what I, all I did, man, was just hit a, hit a um, right, on, right on the belt line. Just punch on the belt line. But it wasn't illegal. You know what I'm saying? And that's what you call a monkey. <laughs> yeah, right, he was so... talking pause about monkeys and bananas and everything. Yeah, for real. I was gonna get to that. 
there they texting me because I ain't, like I said, I didn't know, Murder. This is a surprise he's on the show. I my shit lined up. We've been talking about T. I ain't know you called black niggas monkeys. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Chill, 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 chill. Hey, and even then, man, I'll tell you, like, it's um, truthfully. You can clear it up. That's why you're here. Let's, that's, let's why, that's why I know, I know, I know. For sure. So, this is what it is, really. When, I, when it came to it, I got to press, I got to press them in any avenue. They don't want to fight me. Well, and that the two guys that I was saying was Javante Davis and Terrence Crawford. But I was just talking about them too. I ain't talking about the bunch. And to clarify it more, Javante Tank Davis calls himself a gorilla, an ape, right? So I'm just referring back to everything that has been told. But the mm. fact that I guess we're talking about when it comes to the skin complexion, then maybe it's foul. But but I ain't I I I'm not on that at all. Like at all. I'm just tagging two guys. If everybody want to be in that two guy lane, that's between yeah. But I'm just focusing on two fighters right now. And if they can't can't get at me, if they can't get at me, then we gotta figure another way and move on. So you basically was pressing their buttons to try to get a fight. Exactly. Especially okay. after um, Canelo's fight, we got into it. You know, um, I was walking down, I was going to the ringside, and I just felt like this aura of someone watching me. And I turned, it's Crawford. I'm like, okay, yo, yo, yo. so when we gonna fight? I just, I, you know, I ain't going to let someone suck on me. I, I'm just not like that. And he mushed you, right? Nah, yeah. So he pointed, he pointed, he pointed, and he, he tagged me in my face like this. I smacked his hand down. And then by that time, you had the police on top, all the security holding me down. Not him, but holding me down. I don't, I don't, I just don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, the moment you put hands on me, that's it. Now we got to, we got to. I don't care. I, I really don't give up. I just don't. I don't. Like, if you saying you're the best, and then he says, he mentioned, he said, well, I want to fight you outside. I said, why? You scared the whole world going to see me beat you. That's why. That's why. I'm only one weight class above. That's it. I'm only one weight class. He got to go up two more. I'm just saying, man, it's like the Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran all over again in this modern day era. If you guys like boxing, wouldn't you want to see that? No. And or or wouldn't you want to see those 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 fighters that are great shut me the fuck up, knock me out, and y'all can put it on the memes. You know what I'm saying? And then say this is what happens when you racist. Like that good for me, yo. We gonna fight. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> this That's is exactly what we're having too. Hey, you know what? Then the only way we sign and we see what happens. So you know, more of the story is you called them two niggas monkeys. <laughs> exactly. More of the story is that. That was it. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't where, where do you rate yourself? Where, where do you rate yourself as pound for pound boxer on the boxing list? Um, uh, to be real with you, are we talking like the modern day right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who's uh, everybody who's active. Oh yeah, easily top three. I'll say number one. Fuck it. You know why? Because ain't nobody ever do it the way I did it at just how fluent I did it. You know? I started with the backflips, dances, celebrations, all that. I was mad witty with it. You know what I'm saying? And the climbing up the ranks the way you need to. Everybody else right now, they got the name because they helped them. But when it comes to me, ain't nobody helping me. I ain't signed with nobody. I got no co-signers at all. I did it with just blood, sweat, and tears. So the hard way. Three the hard way. You know? Timo, Timo, you say you rank number one pound for pound right now? Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nobody find me. I'll show right you, now. I'll show you how nice I look the next one. <laughs> yeah, I'll show I you how nice I look. Tio, where you from, man? I was born in Brooklyn. That's where it's where that's where the vibe is coming from, killer. He said he he number one. No, <laughs> I like number it. Number one pound for pound today is crazy, Tio. It's not like who, who, who would you put? Who would you put? Over you right now? Yeah, go ahead. Right now, my list is Canelo, okay. Terrence Crawford, mm -hmm. Tank. All right. And The Mexican monster, niggas is running from him. Benavides. And number, four. yeah, you, you want to say he don't Benavides? That's what you. Benavides, I like him, man. They great champions, but he was complaining a lot about his hand and why he didn't look so good in the uh, 175 pounds. 
nah, we don't we don't do that, man. Like you gonna get it hurt. <laughs> everybody, everybody outside that I that I name know yeah. is undefeated outside of outside of Canelo. Okay, and you know he lost to Floyd. He lost uh, when he moved up in weight. So you thinking that you you should be number one over Canelo too? He he the king of boxing. Let, let's keep him at that. That's cool. We'll keep him at that. God, you, nigga, so you'll be nigga, number two? Nah, <laughs> nigga, I like when the nigga argue with me. Nigga, you yeah, should have told me yeah. He couldn't nigga. go against his yeah. Latino he brothers. He couldn't do that. Yeah, to be real, no, no, no. Yeah, but chill, chill, chill. Because he's on. Cam, Cam, you out your mind, Cam. You bugging the fuck out. I'm number one. See, I don't like really that change is. up of energy, man. Yeah, like listen, that. man. Like if you that. feel like that, you feel like that, bro. Don't let me and nobody else tell you no different if that's how you, you know feel. No, he got to go talk to Eddie if he say that. That's why. I'm, I'm watching him. I'm, I'm watching his body language. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> you got to move assertive. You got to move strategic. That's true. You know what I'm saying? And, and although I know what I am, I got to play a smiley face till then. Why you gotta play smiley face with 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 um with Mexico and you get to call um Javante and them gorillas and and apes and all that? I don't understand that. Well, first, I, man, so I don't call them that. They call themselves that. I just I'm just putting it out there. You know what I'm saying? And when it come and when it come to it, yo, you know what though? This boxing game is all about people. They love you and they hate you. And on both times, you're gonna get paid. You know, listen, let me tell you something, Murder. Yeah. This is, this is, this is, I guess, we getting the mature team of FEMO, not the nigga who was talking crazy about niggas when yeah, he first started. Yeah, backflips and be all that. To somebody slap niggas and all type of shit. This is a mature, grown-up Tia FEMO that we're talking to. He ain't talking that shit like he used to. I ain't saying you ain't still boxing better than you used to, but you used to talk that shit. You, you all mouth, you took a mushroom, nigga. But you just you all mouth laid back and shit. You used to talk that shit, nigga. That's why we was fucking with you. Shit, shit then calm down and I, and you know the masses say and we have to do things the correct way. Where the hell a nigga at? Bring him yeah. back after the break. You gotta, yeah, you gotta bring his dad it. on with him. His dad sure. be going left. Yeah, I like I his dad it. too, man. I like his dad too, man. Shout out to your pops. Yeah, he does yeah. a really good job. That he do, that he do, man. Yeah, he definitely did a good job. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we'd love to have you stick around for more topics. We're going to talk basketball and football. Absolutely. So we're going to go to break. When we return, we will talk about the Knicks. Don't go anywhere. She called us thinking about toxic. Four years of counting Got you feeling like an option Maybe I'm my own problem, babe She tired of hearing I don't know My stubborn in me won't fall, oh, oh Dealing with this thing called trust But she really thinking about She wanna be free Why am I in this one? She wanna be free Walk away. I, I wish somebody told me the rules. Disagreements let her win. Then it's cool. Even when I'm right to sing about you. Welcome back. Now let's get into our underdog picks of the day. On Sunday, the Jets will play the Vikings. Underdog has Aaron Rodgers at 226 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Higher or lower? Yeah. 226 and a half passing yards. I'm going lower. Okay, Cam. Aaron Rodgers is pissing me off. They playing in London too, right? So that, if I'm not mistaken, the game in London. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go lower. I'm gonna go lower. That traveling Aaron don't really yeah. seem not as interested in what he want. I'm gonna go lower. He pissed off with the offense right now. Yeah, they they had a terrible week last week, man. And Aaron Rodgers was a big part of it, but his cadence and candor at them press conferences, you could tell he don't fuck with niggas. He don't fuck with niggas. I'm interested to see how the Jets season go later on this season, but uh, answer's lower stat. I ain't like his body language pause after the after the joint, after the game. Okay. Sam Darnold's at 228 and a half passing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Cam? 
Sam Ben is back. I'm gonna go higher. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going higher. Okay, and Brees Hall's at 59 and a half rushing yards. Do you have him higher or lower, Mace? Mm, I'm gonna go lower. Lower. I'm gonna go higher. If you're rocking with our picks today, you'll receive a 31% profit boost token, and you always get a free pick if you're not already on Underdog, so make sure to support the show and sign up now. So we're going to talk about the Knicks. TFMO, I want to ask you, what is your favorite basketball team before we get into this topic? To be real, um, once it was the Heat, but I like the, I like the Knicks. You like the Knicks? I do. Okay, so Just let's talk. Trade. Yeah, that's what we're going to talk about. So Shams reported Knicks acquired Carl Anthony Towns from Minnesota sending Julius Randle, DiVincenzo, and a first-round pick via Detroit. In you guys' opinion, who benefits the most from this trade? And then how do you guys feel about Cat being on the Knicks? Cam, I'm going to let you go first. I'm going first today. That, <laughs> niggas, you know, so. <laughs> niggas was mad. A few New York Knicks fans call me mad, yo. They call me pissed off, yo. They didn't like it. They were upset about it. Uh, you know, they considered Julius Randle a dog, even DiVincenzo a dog, but they saying the nigga name is Cat. He's not a dog. This is exactly what we're going to do. want a dog, and he's a cat. <laughs> I say, the nigga, they, and listen, listen, I'm just reporting street shit real quick. They say he too sassy to be in the city like that. He, just, he we need niggas from Brooklyn to grit Harlem niggas say he's Soho. This is what they said. This yeah. is not me. I'm just reporting big fans. They said he more so Soho, the West Village and all that. They upset. A few Nick fans upset, but then I heard logical Nick fans who are happy with the trade. I'm just reporting on some niggas called me. Matter of fact, murder. I'm bugging. Me and murder was on the phone with Sin. Yeah. Sin, cause Sin, Sin blamed me and Mace for this trade happening. He yeah. said it was our fault. Cause, Cause we said that during last season when Jalen Brunson was getting off, we was like, yo, I'm not sure if they're gonna need Randall, yo. They not gonna be thinking about Randall. And me and Mace were talking about that. Now this trade happened. Sin blames the trade on us. Not Leon Rose, not World Wide West, it's me and Murder fault that they traded Julius Randle because niggas is listening to us too much. So that was first and foremost, murder. Me and Mace was on the phone for about an hour. I talked, I said, I'm hanging up because nobody could talk sin off the ledge that night. <laughs> Me personally, I think two things. I, I would have liked to see both teams stay as they were. Look, we didn't see how the Knicks were going to look with Julius Randle, with Jalen Brunson becoming a superstar. Uh, they got Mikel Bridges there. We are going to see how that Villanova thing worked out. Uh, I would have loved to see it. Secondly, I think Minnesota's jumping the gun. They were in the Western Conference Finals last year. Not only in the Western Conference Finals, you beat the champions from the previous year. You have a young superstar. Take time to get the chemistry and put it together. But this is some money play. They got rid of cap space. And then supposedly 2026, they're going to save themselves a bunch of money when y'all are one round away from the championship. I don't like it for Minnesota. I think it really is good for the Knicks because you spread the flu out when you have cat. You got to have Joel Embiid uh, come out the, you know, you're not in the paint, but in a defensive zone. And then you could do it with Porzingis as well because cat shoots the three better than DiVincenzo or Julius Randle. So that's what they're thinking about. But I would have really liked to see both them teams stay together. But I understand it if I'm the Knicks. Oh, yeah. I think I think this, this Nick trade was phenomenal. Um, actually, when I look at it on paper, I'm almost ready to be a Nick fan again, Cam. The, I know that's a surprise to you, but I'm, I'm about ready to buy me it a Nick a, jacket. It actually, isn't a, it actually isn't a surprise to me. Why is it, it not? Is Why is it not? You, you, you go wherever it's hot at. Or whoever got a book bag for you and a jacket <laughs> and a hoodie. <laughs> they got a book, book bag, bag and, a and a jacket and a hoodie. That was crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. See, Fimo, this is my childhood friend. <laughs> yeah. Who need enemies, yeah, right? 
for a hoodie and a book bag and then curve them niggas. I loved it. I loved it. They was nigga curve them niggas. They was coming through. <laughs> they did on giving niggas sneakers. Niggas <laughs> Nigga with a hundred six curve. <laughs> Niggas be happy with the book bag to niggas start offering sneakers and glasses. Y'all ain't got no sneakers and glasses. I don't know yeah, if I'm nah. coming. I'm going to keep it 100. I'm going to keep it 100, Murdo. I'm happy you curved them niggas. Because on some G shit, <laughs> let me tell you something. Them niggas offering you a book bag and a sweatshirt is like a nigga in the integration room and they say you want a soda or a candy bar. They <laughs> <laughs> expect you to do anything. Get naked for that. <laughs> I'm glad they show up. They don't think they can get you out there with a book bag and a hoodie. Uh, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Disappointed, my nigga. I would have been disappointed. <laughs> Is this what it come to? <laughs> nigga showing up for book bags now. <laughs> this ain't first day of school, nigga. <laughs> uh, but yo, I think this Nick team is is a formidable opponent now for for the um for the Celtics now that they have Cat. I think they match up way better. And I think this kind of give them the edge with them having Jalen Brunson. So I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction this year. I'm, I'm going with the Knicks out of the East. I'm, I'm, going, I'm going strong early. Pause. I'm going with the Knicks out of the East. The blue glasses is for the Knicks. Tia Fimo, what you got to say? I'm not waiting for Cam. I'm not waiting for Cam. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not waiting for Cam. Got to say. At all. This don't might be the year. This might At be the all. year they don't let us down. I'm, I'm believing this the year they don't let us down. I'm not saying they're winning it, Yo, but I'm, I'm going with them out of the East. Let me tell you something, brother. Years ago, I, my team never lets me down. My team doesn't lose ever. So I've been left the Knicks and if they win I'll just come back and check shit out but my, that's why I got with a team who don't let the me Globe Trotters, the right? The Globe Trotters. You know it baby. You I know knew it. you was you gonna lose. say <laughs> Yeah that's my team I ain't gotta worry about it. We never lose <laughs> and we nice I love See it. If Bimo, it's yeah, on you. you one thing. Oh go ahead The last thing is murder Last thing tomorrow in them comments, they gonna kill murder. Them Knicks fans, don't come over here now. That they gonna kill you tomorrow. Hey, and if they switch up, I will switch up too. <laughs> don't come for me, right? Nah, that. Don't they come for me, cause I'm ready. Pause. Yo, Tio, what, what's your team? Who you going with? Nah, I think the Knicks will do. They're gonna do. They're going to do all right. They're going to do good this year. But I think the chemistry is really what's going to really take it down to that part. You know, it sucks that they had to trade Julius Randle, man. But um, I'll say the beginning of the season, they ain't going to do too well. They had to get Julius out of there, though. Julius had to go, killer. Because he, he going to want the ball. And right now, it's better with the ball pause being in um Jalen's hand. If you have to put the ball in, in Brunson's hand, or in Randall's hand, we will put the ball in in Jalen's hand. Yeah. So it, it made it, you had to get rid of him, and de- and it's definitely an upgrade to the front line for them to have Michael and Cat. I think that's an upgrade to me. It's an upgrade. Yeah, okay. I'm not saying they're gonna do like, but I think ha- after the half of the season, then we're gonna start seeing the pickup. Well, you're giving them time to pick it up. Indeed. That I do. Yeah, with Thibodeau, and with Thibodeau, this should be a. This is as close as we gonna get New York. That's ba- That's basically what I'm saying, Killer. This is as close as we gonna get. New York has never really had um, great shooting and a big man in a long time. I mean, that's Ewan. Some people would say Allen Houston, but I don't count that. I'm talking about. 
early when it was the bomb squad, they had Trent Tuck and all of them. And it was probably like an early union, but it's been a long time since they had both of those at the same time. So what happened to NY next year? You feel like Pat's the difference maker? You're standing on that? I'm just making sure because I know once you said that, everybody's going to run with I'm that. saying Kat is sassy as sassy going to get. And <laughs> and who knows? It may it may be the year to sass, you know? <laughs> it may be the year to sass, you know? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> it might be the year, you know? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. I don't I don't know, y'all. They both they both were averaging around 23, 24, and 10. You know, so you pause, you're swapping 23 and 10 for 24 and 10. But when you really look at it, what what Cat does to the team and how he spreads the floor, the rebounds he can add is the same, but you can't teach height. If you keep Randall and they run into this new Philadelphia team with playoff P, now that team is too big for New York. Pause. If you keep Randall and now you run into the Celtics again, they're too big for them. So you had to you had to upgrade the front line. You had to get something. And you couldn't get rid of the other guy. OG. OG was balling and he fits better with Brunson. Right now, it, it has been a shifting of the guards. It used to be Randall's team. When the playoffs ended, we all agreed it was now Brunson's team. So now it's about what flows with Brunson. And if you already got Brunson doing what he's doing from the wings, you don't need a big man that's going to get the ball and do the same thing. We already got that. So now to add some three point firepower, as well as adding Michael with what they already have, I think this becomes a, a perfect recipe to be East Coast champs. Okay, y'all, y'all heard it here first. Okay, and then NBA Media Day was yesterday. We're going to talk about key takeaways throughout the week, but we're going to start with the Lakers today. So, of course, LeBron and Bronny stole the show. LeBron was making jokes walking past Bronny saying, this is the worst interview of the day, like father, like son duo. How do you guys feel about their public debut as teammates, mates? I'm not. I I can't talk about this. My my lawyer won't let me do it. <laughs> Tio, what do you think? <laughs> um. Yeah. No comment, man. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You don't. You don't like them being on the same team. You don't think it's gonna be a good, like Bronny and LeBron. I mean, that's that's a that's a key moment right there for, for LeBron for sure. He's going to be playing with his son. However, I just, I, I don't know, man. I think that it's just... Say um, what you're thinking. You, you at home. Already. Nah, I just think that it's um it's just more of a mark, marketing move. That's all. Mm. Just you, keep the LA hype and everything. So you, why did you say it's a marketing move? Do you think, what are, what are you saying by it's a marketing move? I don't want to put no words in it to it. Nah, yeah. I think that it's just, um it makes, it's a uh, it's more sense having Bronny and LeBron in the same team than having him away. You know what I'm saying? And, and he already had all the education, all the uplifting, all the upbringing. His father's teaching him, giving him game, dropping dimes. But I think that's uh, that kind of keeps everybody interested to see what that duo can do now that they're together. Do you think it'll do well? Um, I think we just got to wait and see. I don't, I don't know. believe that. Media train. He's media train. <laughs> I actually had to learn that just through my own, my own. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? According to you, you did everything by your damn self. You and your father, nobody else helped y'all do yeah, nothing, man. Yeah, the takeover. What happened to the takeover, right? <laughs> Not a takeover here, man. Y'all gonna see this next one, man. I'm telling you. Guy got really good plans for me, man. <laughs> hey, I wish, I wish them nothing but the best for the Lakers and the team. So do you think LeBron and his son can have the takeover too? They may have a dynamic duo. They may have that. They may have that in effect. We may see some some D Wade and LeBron James kind of relationship, but through his son. I'm I'm hopeful for that. That'd be cool. Mm -hmm. And then Cam, what do you think about their public debut as teammates? 
I think, first of all, Murder want to say some slick shit, so he tried to get T.O. Fimo to say what he really wanted to say. <laughs> and T.O. Fimo, media train, so he really ain't saying what he want to say. What them, both them niggas saying is <laughs> some sucker shit, and I'm not saying that. All right? That's what both of them is really trying to say, and they don't want to say it. I'm going to say it. That's what they trying to, yo, yo, family, yo, they saying that's some sucker shit that Bronny even damn. That's what niggas is still on in September. But I fact, it's October. You're right, you Killer. Deal I'm, with I'm the gonna stand summer. on it. I'm going to stand on it. Until Bronny proves this out. This is a, this is a bag of baloney. Pause. <laughs> Until he proves himself, this is one of the worst decisions of basketball. Until he proves it. Thank you, Killer, for reminding me of who I am. People pay me to know the truth. People want to hear the truth from me. People don't like to hear me bias. They want to hear me tell the truth. So, LeBron, I don't mean no disrespect by this, but until he proves himself, all the disrespect. This shit is like This is, it is what it is. No, no homo. So when you see me, just know <laughs> I just want him to play well. That's it. I want him to prove that he belongs here. I got some tips. Wear the sleeve. Crazy. Wear the red, um, hey, the red, the red, um, LeBron sneakers, or red Kobe's. Either one. I'm telling you how you're gonna have a great season. It's gonna be the sleeve. Wear the sneakers and play aggressive. But what do anyway, I know? I knew I knew you was gonna you really want to say that from the beginning. Then this nigga here is doing ad libs. What did you say? Vienna sausage? What the fuck did you say? You was talking murder the nigga said Vienna sausage. What you meant by that, yo? Yeah. Yo, this shit is just like baloney, yo. That's basically what it is. I'm just putting it in a different context. <laughs> Hey, yo, what the fuck is going on, bro? Like, what you he's saying, you killer. Your opinion. What he's no, 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 saying, no, hold on, yo, what no, he's I saying is, we, we, we think thing. Bronny could be nice. We, he just has to prove it. We're not saying he can't be nice. We're saying until he proves it, it looks crazy yeah. to the basketball. Well, my point is this: that don't, that's not that's not that's not my point, purist. Because okay. that ain't what you said. I I had to spin the block to get this answer out to y'all niggas. Now he he chiming in. Y'all both said some nice shit. I won't comment. You said, and he said we have to see. I'm expecting greatness. Then you say what you say, and he say, "Yeah, it's Vienna sausage." Pause. Now y'all really saying what y'all want to say? Why y'all just ain't say what y'all want to say from the beginning? That's all I'm saying. Go ahead, T.O. Go ahead. What else you calling on? What else before I finish? Go ahead. With Audi. With Audi now, then we get the real feelings out. Go ahead. Nah. I to be real, nah, that's really it, though. I, I, you right, you right. Give it to you, killer man. What is he right about? <laughs> right, it's, it's just not the best. It ain't the best for it. You know what I'm saying? The media, all that. Say that. May so, said that. Yeah. <laughs> May said that. Back to me. I got. We got your real feelings out. I'm glad that's all I really wanted. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Listen, at the end of the day, T.O. Father there for him. Braun is there for his son. If my son could have been in the NBA and I could have cheesed it, however I could cheese it, I would have cheesed it. I would have been happy for this day, too. I'm happy with what my son is doing now. I'm happy he didn't go to the NBA. I'm just saying if I had an opportunity to cheese it, cheese it. Look. You're look, right. You're right about that. Listen, the, my, no, the, look, my, the son, my son is the president of PHP East Coast. Yeah. Did, they, did he do an interview? <laughs> like, did I did I get my interview? Like, did I say there's a couple of other people ahead of you before I can make you the president of the East Coast of PHP? Um, I'll get back to you later. Did he go do that? Nah. You're right. You're right. <laughs> so I'm just saying. I dig where we at basketball mind. He has a lot to prove. I definitely dig that. But how we got here? Yeah, that's true. Hey, I keep I'm, I'm going. Not. I keep going back and forth, pause about this because that it is true that you know when you have a son, you're gonna do everything you can to make sure your son do well. I mean, and I'm not gonna go against that because I know I do a bunch of stuff for my son. I would drive to the White House if I had to from Atlanta just to make sure he get the internship. But I understand that. I, I definitely understand that.
But I would make sure my son was also prepared, though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring him to the White House, and he's not White House material yet. That that that's me though. That's my. That's my. very true. I, I don't. I don't think he would have got the invite. They just not inviting regular niggas to the White House. <laughs> yeah, right. I dig it. I dig. I get the double checking all that, but <laughs> don't act like he was a, a save save a child's life <laughs> to the White House. <laughs> he earned his way to the White House. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. <laughs> hey, don't do that to my nigga, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's going to be calling me in a minute. Yo, why are you on TV talking crazy? <laughs> you didn't bring me to the White House. I brought you to the White House. Yeah, that's what he's going to tell me. <laughs> that's what my son said. I don't want to be Mason's son. I want you to be Zach's dad. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah, gets man. beside himself all the time. Yeah, listen, man, I dig that though. <laughs> Nigga want their own identity, man. Yeah, yeah. So take him to a different team, train him, put him somewhere else, let him season up. I don't think it should be too. It's too soon, I think, for them two to be together. It's real. It's real. It's real. Um. Gorilla and banana talk coming out now. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Make some platanos right now. <laughs> platanos. <laughs> He's going viral tomorrow. He don't know. <laughs> He's he going viral tomorrow. They're going to be on it. I love it, man. It is what it is, yo. It literally, it literally is. Oh, man. <laughs> well, real quick, I'll say, y'all know how I feel. If you can beat the system, beat the system. I think LeBron's going to make sure that he's prepared. I think it's a dope thing that they're playing on the same team. We haven't seen it happen before. So if they can do it and do it well, I'm not hating. So we'll see how that goes for them. Are you saying he's hating? No. You say hating. you're not hating. The way that came out, it sounded like that. I'm not saying you're hating. I just see why a lot of people feel like this is just a marketing thing because it's like, why would you put them on the same team if you feel like you haven't seen Bronny perform at that level yet? But I think we're going to see that. I think they're going to make sure that he's more than well prepared. Hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, I think he does well in LA. Honestly, yeah. I really do. A lot of people. I just want to see it. Yeah. They predicted it years prior to him coming to the league. Yeah. And predicted those two being together. Yeah, and it makes sense. Like, if you could do it, I think we all would. So I just think that's a situation that huffing and puffing is crazy. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think it's a dope thing. It hasn't been done because at the end of the day, in the history books, that's what we're going to see. How. So, Just so you guys can hear, he said it's not going to be a good look for the Lakers. But this yeah. is what we need. Sports entertainment this is what we need. We need stuff like this to talk about this type of stuff and see what they're going to really do this season. Yeah. And storylines. Like, in every sport, there's storylines. So people are following that, and I think it's going to bring attention to the Lakers that it should. In addition, if Bronny does perform well, then it helps them even more. So yeah. you don't know till you try what it. if he doesn't play well? Then we got to start making some things shake. <laughs> but he has a year is to it, try it is out. Is it bad for the Lakers? I want to ask you and Cam this. Is it bad for the Lakers if he doesn't play well? Um, it's not bad for the Lakers, per se. It's bad for his career. Because how, then how? after, if he underperforms when it is time to go to another team and actually start his own career whenever LeBron decides to retire, people aren't going to want to pick him up because of how he performed on the Lakers. So this is that opportunity. And if he is playing on the court with his dad, if I'm his dad, I'm going to make sure, like, hey, I'm going to throw this to you. You better, we practice this. Like, if you ain't get it right, Missed opportunity. Like everything that he does next is an opportunity because all eyes are going to be on him. So if he wants to make that jump to help his career, he better get to it. Yeah. And that's what I, that's what I more so am communicating when you hear me say that I'm not in favor of it because the psychological pressure that is going to put on him the, or that it could potentially, I don't know his fabric. I don't know what he's made of. Um, but, I believe this is a very delicate situation. Yeah. Like this can go very well or very bad. Yeah. You know, because all this pressure doesn't hang on LeBron. Yeah. It hangs on the child. Yeah. Because if it doesn't go well, 
he's the one that got the walk with the brunt of this whole decision. You know, it's what he wanted, but I'm just, that's what I'm speaking. Yeah, no, I, I get it. When yeah. I say a bad idea, it's because I'm thinking as a father, like the psyche of yeah. the child, like this might not be. Yeah, of a course. Great, great decision. But in that sense, this is what it's going to take in order to take him to that next level. Yeah. Sometimes you're put on big stages yeah. that you're not always prepared for. But when that stage comes, yeah. you got to show out. And that's why I said we just, I, I want to see it. Yeah. So I wanted to add that context to what I'm saying because I'm not just raining on this parade. I'm actually saying that this is a lot of pressure. This could go both ways, you know, and that I wish him the best and I sincerely wish him the best because this is a man's child. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Course. You want it to go well. Of course. I get that. Hey, well, or Cam, did you have another point? No, well, the only thing I was going to say, I think you should spend some time in the G League and they'll, they'll bring him up for, for specific games if need be. I don't think he needs to jump in the loop of what's going on immediately because we have to realize, too, they got a brand new head coach and J.J. Redick, and he's trying to make a statement also. I don't know how they're going to use him for a, a G League or keep him in from the start of the season, but that would be my recommendation. Put him in the G League, bring him up some games. And see how it goes from there, so I don't have all that pressure from day one. Yeah, good point. Okay, well, that's all the time that we have for today. Tio, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Tio Fimo. Yeah, the takeover. The takeover. Terrence Crawford. That's all smoke. Yes, sir. All right. Shut my mouth up already. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. Thank you all for watching. And as always, it is what it is. What you want, nigga? Everything, nigga, super size. Two big necks. Like when they doing them two for five.